Hey, Synth. So you probably were wondering when I was ever going to get around to being done with this stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, this has been an interesting uh, journey, but this has been a good, uh, good thing. Um, so basically part of why it took so long is uh, I'm going to be hitting uh, a lot of functionality at once. Um, there's a few things that aren't working quite right in the um, other side, uh, the actual game side. Um, you'll notice the gimbals are showing up too large and there's a few other little glitches there, but um, not anything that affects the data definition uh, work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make a video on that so we can get these things in the correct um, data definition. So um, one of the things that you'll notice is that uh, looking here at the missile corvette, um, we no longer have an LOD group at all. We only have uh, one um, renderer at all. Um, it's going to be one per mesh. So some, you know, some of these larger things obviously have multiple meshes, like um, for the um the master um uh, master controller which i've got i guess disabled oh it's moved um for this thing it's got what like four i think um six so yeah so there's some with multiple components and those will have multiple components still but it's it's like everything is in one lod now uh, one thing you'll notice is that when I don't have the missile corvette selected in this particular um, in the prep project, it's not actually um, doing the LEDs for it. Um, if I select the missile corvette and then I'm watching it here, then you'll see that it does the LEDs and then eventually the culling uh, exactly as it did uh, before. Now, um, if you, there's a couple of little overrides here. We've got this new Arc and Visual ship here, which is a little bit different than uh, um, what was the Arc and Visual object before. And um, you can override the LOD that it's currently using. Here it's showing you some stats saying current distance from the camera is. A certain amount and you better have it linked so that it actually um, registers it properly because um, it's distance from the the linked camera um, and so then it says what LOD it's actually showing and um, then if you want to override that um, you can come in here and hit overriding uh, test LOD is 2 then it gives you a little extra button saying clear any overrides. And so then it'll display LOD2 no matter what you do, no matter how close you get. You can make it display LOD3 if you want, or LOD4, which has disappeared on purpose. Um, you know, an LOD1 where it's just down some, and LOD0, of course, and you can hit clear any overrides. Um, what that does is set it to negative one, which is what it should be. Um, and um, there's also a different thing. Normally, you'd hit apply up here. Um, but if you do that, then depending on exactly where you are, um, it's going to go ahead and apply your LOD as whatever it currently is. So when I hit select here, you'll see that this is on. Um, hmm. Interesting. Well, it actually is on the correct thing at the moment for some reason. Um, yeah, see, now it's on the wrong thing. You never know what you're going to get with that. Um, it won't be on the right default. So you use safe apply prefab instead. This is the same sort of thing, except it quickly puts it to LOD zero and all the defaults um, and uh, saves it. So then it's definitely on LOD zero's data when it goes in there. Now, uh, it will not clear the overrides and that's by design so if you have L you know overriding test led you know two and you hit safe apply 
then when you go in here, it's going to be on LOD2, and that's fine. But it's actually going to be, hmm, it is locked into that. Whoops. Well, I did it on purpose, but uh, I guess it's not a good idea to do that. Oh, and you can't use this when you're selected in the tree there, or else it won't apply. Um, so save apply prefabs here, and all should be well now. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I guess always clear your overrides before you say some, save something for actual use in the game. So, um, the LEDs before were based on the size of the thing on the screen. Now it's based on the distance of the thing from the camera. Um, that's actually cheaper to calculate on the CPU. And um, I'm able to put in a number of other, um, there's, there's a whole lot of benefits to doing it the way that I'm doing it. Um, and it's a little bit less um, uh, generic. I'm not sure that this approach would necessarily be the best approach for Unity to take as kind of their built-in LOD system. But this is a fairly old um, concept for how to handle LOD. Lots of first-person shooter games use this um, going way back. So um, this is how um, you convert the existing uh, systems that already have an LOD on it to using the new stuff. So we'll, I'm going to do the fighter, and then I'm going to leave you with like the bomber and all the other ones that are that have LEDs set up. So um, the first thing is um, you've got this new um, level of detail section here, which may be collapsed. It doesn't matter. You can expand it. You'll notice you don't have to select like this is a squad or anything like that anymore. Um, the text mesh you don't need to mess with. Um, and so it's pretty much um, the animators thing is for me, if I want to animate part of the ship, um, that's built in with the LEDs now. So you won't need to mess with that either. Um, what you will need is the LOD chains, which you can um, add any missing ones in an automated fashion. Um, it'll save you time uh, later, but you have to get the other old LEDs out first. And then um, there's also the LOD distances. Now, these are separated out because the distances are calculated um, once at the overall what would be a group, and then the chains are done per submesh. So um, the very first thing when we're converting one of these from the old format to the new is to go ahead and set up our LOD distances so that we have uh, four of them. Now, what you're going to want to do is go to your LOD group. And then go ahead and select that so that you're right on the border of wherever you were before. Then click back to this, and it will tell you current distance from the camera. And you just plug that right on in. So uh, if it's less than two, it will be LOD zero now. So easy enough. Come here and right at 9%. Click back. Uh, 5.6. Okay. Um, down here, LOD three, and click back, and this will be fifteen point six, and Bing, the very last one, fifty four point four. Um, I will note that for some of these other ones that are larger, you can have very different numbers. I mean, look how how much bigger these numbers are here. Um. You know, um, we're still using the same principle of how big is this on the screen, but we're not defining it in how big is it on the screen. We're determining it, we're defining it in terms of distance. So the distance for it to get that tiny on the screen is a lot smaller for a small thing, you know, and way bigger for a big thing. Um, and just like with the other LOD system, you can uh, go ahead and um, uh just you can define as many lods as you want uh you don't have to define um four so if you want fewer that's fine so 
now we've got that done, we can get rid of the old LOD group. And um, we're only going to keep the fighter zero here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these out, though, for reference. Um, and then uh, I'm going to take this human fighter LOD zero. And um, OK, so first of all, we've got this box collider. Where's the box collider on this guy? Um, ooh, I actually don't have a box collider on this guy. Um, that was an oversight. So I can actually add box collider on this one. So go ahead and fix the missile corvette with that. Um, with the fighter here, same sort of deal. You can go ahead and drag this up all the way to the top. And go ahead and drag the flame trail up to the top. It keeps their positions and scales. It translates it all. And go ahead and add a box collider directly to it. And by the way, if this starts ever happening to you, then select whatever and hit the F key. And that automatically focuses the camera on whatever you have selected. And that resets the clipping planes of the selection camera, the editor scene camera. Um, so now I don't need any of these things. Um, now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here again, um, and we'll go ahead and say um, fighter H renderer. You you can call these whatever; it doesn't really matter. Um, now, I'm going to come back over here. Now that I just have the exact, I'm going to go ahead and call this just fighter renderer. Now that I have just the exact things that I actually want for LOD zero, this is exactly LOD zero and nothing else inside this tree. Um, now I'm going to add, hit add any missing mesh renderers to LOD chain. So go ahead and do that. And now it's set up an LOD chain for me with the filter and the renderer set up. So um, it, it basically sets one chain per renderer set and so on the ai master controller you would have nine chains each with their own sets and so each of those nine chains would have four separate um sub things this is slightly more tedious to set up but the efficiency gains are absolutely ridiculous um it this is just it's not even just about the distance calculations. The way that I'm swapping in and out textures and materials is also vastly superior to what they were doing. Um, and so um, I'm sorry for the slight extra hassle, but um, it, it's definitely worth it. Um, so you're going to want to add however many sub elements to the LED chain entry for each LED chain entry based on um, whatever it is, um, whatever it is you've uh, done in LED distances. So since I created four here, that means I need four here should match. So I need to specify for each one what my mesh is, what my material is, and what my selected material is, which is um, a new thing which is one of the many, many things this all handles in a uh, very, um, very uh, efficient and unified way. This handles everything from LEDs, culling, selection, um, animation, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, all in one fell swoop, which is really efficient. Um, so. For LED zero, we go ahead and click into the um, base renderer. So we've got our mesh filter here. And so then this has, when you click that, as long as the project uh, panel is open, it takes you straight to the thing. And so when I click that, um, I can then click back to my um, Arc and Visual Ship script and then just drag and drop into there. So P plane three is what LED zero should be. Now, for human fighter UV, here we are. That's the material. 
And so then I can drag that in. That is almost certainly going to be the same for uh, um, LEDs 0 and 1. So we can go on ahead and put that in there. Now, uh, I'll get to the selected stuff in a bit. So let's go ahead and finish the actual existing stuff first. So um, now this is where we come into our other LODs that we have, um, these older uh, pieces that we're pulling out. So we've got Human Fighter LED 1, all right? There's that. And um, so I can drag that over into LED 1. I'm going to bet this is the LED 2, yep. And um, then, so we'll go back over here. This is using Human Fighter LED, yep. Human Fighter UV, yep. And then here we've got Basic Ship LED 2, yep, as expected. And we've got Human Fighter LED 2, as expected. And then here we've got Human Fighter LED 2, again, because that was so efficient, evidently. Uh, I think you set this up, so, I mean, that would make sense. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull in. Human Fighter LED 2 here again. And then now, click Basic Ship LED 2. This is an easy one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and yeah, you can always reorder these in the list if it makes it easier, because it kind of does. So um, Basic Ship LED 2 is the first one. And then you've got Basic Ship LED 2 selected, which is the next one. Basic Ship LED 3. Basic ship LED3 selected. Go ahead and hit apply. We didn't do the safe apply, it doesn't matter right now. Um, and then we can delete, ah, we can delete these things. Those are no longer needed. Um, now, since I have this thing selected, you'll see it move through the LODs. Now it's on LED1, now it's on LED2, and LED3, and gone or yeah LED4 is gone because it's counting from zero so now it's been uh, called so uh, we can see that that is indeed functioning properly we can do override is selected and you'll notice this doesn't actually do anything right now uh, in fact it'll actually make it um, uh, show with a pink texture because we haven't defined a selected material here. Um, once you pass a certain points where you get to element uh, LED 2 and 3, since it's already using, these should always use basic ship LED 2. So the material should be the same for every final two LODs. And um, you can see that it does this very bright highlighting there. So now what we want to do, I'm go ahead and turn that off. Um, Safe apply prefab. So now we're going to click to Human Fighter UV. I'm going to select this, hit Control D to make a copy. And it did. The name isn't super important, but we can go ahead and call it Human Fighter UV selected. Now, um, in order to properly edit this, we want to be able to see it in practice. So we're going to go ahead and drag this in, and we're going to hit Override is selecting, remove the camera slightly so we can see what's happening. Now we can click into the human fighter thing here. And now we just kind of mess around a little bit. So first of all, we'll take the rim shadow effect down because that it doesn't need to be uh, shadowing using a bunch of lighting on it. We want it to glow more. Uh, emission strength, go ahead and crank that up. No, sorry, we're not gonna crank that up. Uh, Rim uh, light size, we're going to shrink. And then either the rim molt or the rim strength, crank that up and probably whiten it out some. Um, and so now this is what happens when it's selected. It looks like that and then gets more faint as we get further away. So it gets very, 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 very white as it goes that way. Now, if you want to dampen that just a tad, especially when you're closer so you can see anything, then first of all, you can turn the strength down some. 
And then uh, secondly, the rim light size, turning that up will actually make it a lot less, um, uh, you know, just everywhere. So turning that up some, now it's clearly glowing and different and it stays more similar here and it's not getting such a ridiculous overglow. If you want to turn down the strength a little bit more, that'll cut down on the bloom. Um, it's really just a minor tune to taste thing. And um, yeah, and it looks pretty consistent going all the way in and out. Oh, that's because it is consistent. I'm not selected on it. Now I'm selected on it going all the way in and out. There is a big, big difference there when it hits uh, that point. Um, so if I, probably this just needs to be a little bit on the brighter side here. And I select this. We, we want people to notice that these things are selected. Still be able to see it, but um, okay, apparently we're not. Probably the rim light size is a little bit on the high side, so by lowering it, it makes the um, light clip less. So now it's a little too bright. Oh. Um, so I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is just when ships are selected. It's a little selection indicator, it's handy, that's it. So then hit clear any overrides, safe apply prefab. Um, and then you can hit select to make sure that it did that. You should see your LOD zero values in here. And that's it, you're done. Um, the um, same thing applies for all of the other various ships. Um, there's going to be a little bit of extra complexity with the ships that have animated parts. I'll make a separate video on that, but it's really uh, now that there's this unified system for all this, it's actually a lot simpler than what it would have been using the old system. It was nasty before. So I'm very pleased with uh, the improvements we have here. So um, that's it. Thank you.